Hey, so lesson 3.2 is next on deck. We're going to split it into two parts, part A and part B. And speaking of part A, we're going to have a 1980s part A talking about the movie Rad. And that's relevant because today we're going to learn about ratings. It's all we do. We're just going to learn about ratings. And ratings are going to redefine how you think of angles. Super important in pre-calc, super important in calculus. So ratings are a different way to measure angles. And how do we measure angles? Well, we have to have some ground rules. So we're used to using a coordinate plane when we plot points, right? And we graph functions. We go over x, up y. But what about angles? Okay, there's a standard way to do that too. We put an angle in standard position. We put the vertex on the origin. So if you remember, a vertex of an angle, an angle is made up of two rays, right? So here's one ray, here's another ray. And the vertex is the point where the rays intersect. We put that at the origin. Okay, one ray coincides with the positive axis, and the other ray is called the terminal ray. So the first bullet point asks you to draw a 45-degree angle in standard position. As we said, the initial ray will be on the x-axis. So we draw the first ray on the x-axis, and then we go up with the angle up into the positive quadrant, right? X is positive, Y is positive, and we're going to go 45 degrees. Now, right now, we're dealing with degrees. We'll switch over to radians soon. But that other ray is called the terminal ray. So we have an initial ray and a terminal ray. The terminal ray is where the angle stops or terminates. Okay, so the first bullet, draw a 45 degree angle, positive, in standard position and label the initial ray and terminal ray. Did it. Okay, next one, draw a negative 225 degree angle in standard position. Well, to do that, I'll use a different color. The initial ray will start at the same position from the origin It'll be on the x-axis. Now, we need to go negative 225 degrees. So negative is going to be in the other direction. We go up into the positives for our positive angles. We go down into the negatives for our negative angle. So going down 90 degrees would be to here. Another 90 up to 180. And then we want to do negative 225. It would be about there. So let's draw a straight line here. Uh... That is very messy. But we're going in the negative direction. And sometimes it helps us to label this. So we'll label it on the arc. We'll label that negative 225 degrees. And then we're going to label our terminal rate as well. And so this shows how we can draw angles in standard position. Remember, that's what we're calling it. We have an initial ray and a terminal ray. We have 45 degrees going up. And then negative 225 is going down and it wraps around, right? And then sometimes these will meet, but we'll talk about that later. But you ever wonder why the first quadrant, you remember from Algebra 1, the first quadrant's this quadrant, right? This part of the graph. Why was that the first quadrant? That has to do with these angles here. When it's all positive, you get up in quadrant 1. And then we're going to keep going counterclockwise when we label these. This would be quadrant 2. Quadrant 3 is down here. And lastly, we have quadrant 4. Okay, so I think we've done all of these bullets here. We've drawn a 45 degree positive angle up into quadrant one, a negative 225, and we labeled all of our quadrants. So we're Okay, so now let's take some practice. We'll go back to our geometry years, right? And we're going to uh, name all the angles that are in standard position. Give the initial ray and the terminal ray. Easy peasy. So the first angle I see in standard position is this angle right here. Okay, so how do we name that angle? Well, remember, we're going to use a little angle mark here. Angle. And we start at one, we have to start on one ray and end on the other ray, right? And the vertex has to be in the middle. So I'm going to name this. I'm always going to start with the initial ray. This would be angle C, D, B. Easy enough. We know that the initial ray is ray D, C. And we write that in this order. You have to start at the end point and go through okay, the other point. So then the terminal ray would be D, B. All right, so we're going to write it like this. How about the other angle? Well, the other angle, I see we could either go positive this direction or we could go negative this direction. But we'll keep it like we did before. We'll go negative. Okay, that's like negative 225. But this isn't quite negative 225, is it? But regardless, the angle, if we were going to name it, would be angle what? C, D, A. And then the initial ray would be still D, C. That's not going to change, is it? That's always going to be the same. And then the terminal right here would be DA, ray DA. Okay, so that's how we can name the different parts of each angle. Now, we're going to change things up. 
We're not going to measure things in degrees in this course. Or next year in AP Calc, you don't get degrees anymore. There's another way of measuring angles, and that unit of measurement is called a radian. We are going to talk about the definition of the radian later, but first we have an important formula to learn. So let's use the circle and sketch an angle with a terminal ray in quadrant 2. I think I have that here. Go ahead and put that on your papers. The rays of the angle will be touching the circle. Notice that the circle is kind of cut off here right from here to here. Here's our angle, right? The angle kind of goes from here to here. Right? Let's call that angle theta. We're used to using theta for angles. And then this part of the circle, this arc here, all right, it's just the part of the circle that is between the two terminal rays. The fancy way of saying this is that the arc of the circle is subtended by the angle. So because we use the word subtended, then we're going to use the variable s up here to measure the length of this arc. Okay, so whatever the length of this arc is, we're going to call s. We already know that the radius, okay, these are both radii, right? So that's going to be given as well. So we have a nice little formula that we use. We say that theta is going to equal, if we're working in radians, that is, s divided by r. Okay, so if you take the arc length and you divide it by the radius, you get the angle measure in radians. Okay, again, the angle measure is going to be in radians. S is going to represent the arc length and R is the radius. All right, so how does this all fit together? Well, we got to figure out what a radian is, and I think we're almost there. An angle of one radian is when the angle creates an arc that is equal to one radius. Okay, so I'm going to say that again. One radian is equal to the angle that's required to have an arc length equal to the radius. So the radius, we're going to put that right here. Okay, that's going to be radius. Okay, if I measure off the same distance up here so that that distance is also the radius. Look, if this were a piece of string, these two pieces of string would be the same length. When that happens, then we say that theta equals 1, 1 radian, if we're dealing in radians. Now, obviously, this is if we're talking about degrees, this is way more than 1 degree, right? 1 degree is tiny but we have to start thinking in radians. So one radian is the angle that's required to create an arc length that is equal to the radius. All right, so now can you estimate how many radians are in one circle? One full circle has how many radians? Take an estimate. We will let that question marinate until later. Right now we're gonna use our brand new formula. The figure gives an angle in standard position. It looks pretty cool. We got theta, we got radius, we got the arc length here. Find the measure of the angle if the arc length is 8.796 and the radius is 4. Easy. We're just going to write down our formula. Our angle is going to equal the arc length divided by the radius. So in this situation, theta will equal, yes, it's this simple. We just plug it in, 8.796. We divide that by our radius, which is 4. And that's going to give us an answer of, let's use a calculator. When I plug it in, I get 2.199. Okay, so we'll write that down, and that is out three figures here. Ooh, I said three, but you know what I meant? 2.199. Okay, so if they give us units, which they didn't in this situation, if they give us units like centimeters and centimeters, then theta is still in radians. Guess what? That's our new unit. We'd say 2.199 radians. Okay? Let's use our new formula to figure out some more problems. I know you're excited about that. If an angle measures, if an angle measure is 1.4 pi radians. Now, before you get too confused about that, let's just figure that out so I get a regular old number. Let's pull up the calculator. Y'all know there's a pi button, right? So we're going to hit 1.4, and then we can just hit the pi button. It's right here. It's in blue. So we're going to hit second, bring that up, and it's going to tell us 4.398297. Okay, so that's approximately what 1.4 pi is equal to. So I'll write that down there. And the radius of the circle is 2.7. What's the length of the arc that's subtended by the angle? So let's write down our formula here. We have theta is equal to the arc length divided by the radius. When I substitute in, it tells me the angle measure is this right here. So I'm just going to write 4.398. Okay, I'm going to truncate right there and stop. That is going to be equal to... We want to know this, the arc length, so we don't know that. I'm going to leave that in S, but we know that the radius of the circle is 2.7. And guess what we can do? 
We can now multiply both sides by 2.7. This is easy algebra, right? Times 2.7. These will cancel out, and that'll give us an arc length that is equal to, but before we do that, I'm going to show you in your calculator. I know that we cut our numbers off when we round it or we truncate it, but I think it's a best practice to always just use that full number there. We're going to do 4.398 right with some extra garbage and it's that number times 2.7 so let's just leave it in the calculator right don't round it until the very last step and we're gonna get s is going to equal 11.875 and now we're gonna either round it or truncate it we're gonna go out three places so boom that solves number three why don't you pause the video and do number four by yourself ready set go do number four did you get a five all right, so I got a five. So plug it all in. I multiply both sides by R. We're just doing some algebra here, right? We're going to divide both sides by 0.625 pi. Pi's will cancel, but you can work it all out if you want to in your calculator. I get five. So we're just going to say that radius equals five. Easy enough. So now let's talk about a very special circle called a unit circle. A unit circle has a radius of one unit. Okay, well, that makes it pretty special for a couple reasons. Number one. We know where it intersects, the x and the y axis. In other words, if the radius is 1, this intersects at 1, 0. Up here on the y axis, it's at 0, 1. Okay, what if we go left? Well, that's negative, right? So that would be negative 1, 0. That would be right here. And then down here, we would have what? This would be 0, negative 1. So we know all of those values. Okay, now let's look at the formula that we had. We had theta equals the arc length over the radius. But I'm telling you for a unit circle, this specific circle, the radius is equal to one. So I'm just gonna put a one in there. That simplifies our formula into theta is equal to s, right? Because s over one is just s. The radian measure for the, of the angle is the same as the length of the subtended arc. This is true whenever the radius is equal to one. We call that a unit circle. Okay, one full revolution going all the way around. Well, we know that all the way around a circle, that's called a circumference. That is 2 pi r, right? But we know the radius is going to equal 1. So in other words, one revolution represents exactly 2 pi radians. Was your estimate from the top of the page close? Remember back when I asked you how many radians would fit in a full circle? It's actually 2 pi. And 2 pi is about equal to 6.28. So if you guessed anywhere, you know, between 6 or 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6.28. That's how many radians will complete an entire circle. Okay, half a revolution would be half of this. Well, what's half of 2 pi? Well, that's just pi. Pi radians, or 3.14, right? That's approximately equal to 3.14 radians. And a quarter of a revolution is half of this. So we're going to call that pi over 2. And then I don't know if you want to memorize this, but this is about 1.57. Okay, they're good to memorize, so you have them in your head. But that is, if we were going to label it in terms of radians, we could put these labels on it, right? We start at 0, and then we go all the way to 2 pi. Now, half of 2 pi is 1 pi. That would be over here. That would be a semicircle, right? So this would be like 1 pi. It's about 3.14. Up here, we have pi. This is half of it, right? Going halfway. So that's pi over 2, or if we wanted to, we could just say it's 0.5 pi. But honestly, we're going to like these fractions a lot better in the future. Down here we have 3 halves pi, or another way to think about that is 1.5 pi. That's how many radians are in, we would say, 270 degrees. We have to start thinking in radians from now on. So that brings us to our next problem here. Give an estimate of how many radians this angle represents. Here's the angle from here to here. Well, we know that a semicircle, if we go over there, we just did this, a semicircle, that's pi radians, right? Because two pi is all the way. So if this is pi, pi is approximately, I know you know this, 3.14. Down here we had 1.5 pi or three pi over two, but that's about 1.5 pi. So somewhere between one pi and 1.5 pi, we want to leave our answer in terms of pi, so probably we'll just say it's what? This is 1, this is 1.5, this is maybe approximately equal to 1.1 pi. That's pretty easy. I mean, we're just estimating based on the fact that this is 1 pi, this is 1.5, this is 2 pi. 
So this angle stops. It's really close to 1, not as close to 1.5, but in between 1 and 1 1.5. So the last part. To uh, Well, let's talk about, we'll go back to this one again. See this angle? What if I went around again? That would be adding another 2 pi, right? And what if I went around again? That would be adding another 2 pi. So that sets up the next question here. So that helps us figure out questions like number 6 here. An angle with a measure of 4.3 pi. We know that's more than 2 pi. So that, that angle goes around more than once. Sometimes we draw it like this. Like it goes past 2 pi and it keeps going all the way to 4.3 pi. We want to know where is the terminal ray? Where, which quadrant does that angle end in? Okay, so here's the hint. We're going to subtract or add 2 pi. We have 4.3 pi. I'm going to take a full revolution away, which means I'm going to subtract 2 pi. So what does that give us? If I take 4.3 pi and I take 2 pi away from it, it's going to give me 2.3 pi, right? That is still more than 2 pi. So I'm going to take another 2 pi away from it. I'm taking another revolution. This angle went around more than once. It's like that many times, right? That's going to leave me 0 0.03 pi. Okay, well that is between 0 and 2 pi. So now I can kind of graph it here. We know this is 0. This is, uh, what do we got here? This is pi over 2, right? Which is 0 0.5 pi. That's what that's equal to. hope that's all not too messy. But 0.3 pi, that's going to be in the first quadrant right here somewhere. It's between 0.5 and 0. So we'll just say that this is going to be in quadrant 1. And that's basically all we have for today. We're just learning about radians. Remember radians, a different way to think about angles. Woo! That was rad, and that was long. Good luck on that practice and that mastery check. Remember, this is pretty rad. This is Mr. Kelly. Remember, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. See?